Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. I've gotten a few recent phone calls about this subject. It's always been sort of a question that's asked about in training classes, and I've seen it asked about on forums and misunderstood a lot. And the reason that this topic is going to be misunderstood is, is we're going to talk about engraving text. So I want to take some kind of a tool on the machine and I want to cut text into my part. And uh, usually what we refer to that as is engraving text. So let's switch from the design uh, workspace over to the manufacturer workspace really quick. And we can check out that I have a setup created. I've already added a tool that I want to use into this so you don't have to watch me pick it from a library. And we're going to go through and talk about a couple tool paths. If I hit the drop down, if we look through the list, the reason we get a lot of, of misunderstanding is we say we want to engrave text and here we have the engrave command. But the majority of the time that you want to put text on a part is you most likely want to use the trace command, which isn't quite as intuitive of thinking that you want to engrave it. So let's hop back over to the design and look at the text that I've created. So if I edit this first sketch, what you'll see is this text has no thickness to it. It's all just single lines. And if I double click on it, you'll see that I've used a font here called uh, this name dot SHX. And when we look in the, the fonts directory inside of Fusion, we'll notice that there's some fonts and then a line. Anything that ends in .shx inside of Fusion is going to be a single line text. And anything below that line is going to be a true type font, which is going to be in the outline style text. So you can kind of differentiate what text you're going to get by which side of the line you pick on there. Uh, so you can see here, I've just got some single line text. If I go and I edit my other sketch that I have here, you're gonna see that I have uh, some outline text. And if I click on that, that's the font name that I use in the height. And you can see that it definitely has an outline to it. I also created some other text in this part just to show how the uh, engrave and trace command work. And you can see that here, I've just made some single line text and some outline text and I didn't extrude either one of those so I just have those both set up as just as just text right now so let's pop back over to manufacturer let's start adding some tool paths so we can see if we can understand this a little bit better so on I'm in the manufacturing environment I think I have my camera set to a perspective for some reason I'm gonna switch that back to orthographic so I'm back in the manufacturing environment and I want to start out by first cutting this single line text. So from the 2D menu, I'm going to select the trace command and I'm going to grab that tool that I already have uh, put in my part. So it's a quarter inch Harvey engraving tool that I use to add text. If you watched the video that I did in the speed vice handle, this is the tool I use to cut the style logo in there. So I have my tool selected. Now I'm gonna move on to my curve selections and I'm just gonna click on that piece of text right there and click and you're gonna see all the edges of it turn blue. I don't need to worry about the heights tab here. I'm gonna jump right over to the passes tab. So this tool path is meant to have the tip of the tool trace the whatever entity that's selected. And in order to get it to do it at depth, most of the time we set this on the heights tab, but here we have an axial offset field. I'm gonna put an, an axial offset of negative 0 0.002, which is what I believe I use when I cut the logo on the Sile speed by sandals. When I'm happy with my text, I can go ahead and hit okay. And now I get the text that appears on my part. If I shut my models off and I click on my tool path, you see that I just get a single line. And if I turn my models back on, you'll see that that text, that those lines are just slightly below the surface, so it makes it kind of hard to see what's going on because the, the tip of the tool is below the surface of the part. But that is a lot of times what you want to use to put part numbers or things like that on a part. Now, I also have this slot that I cut, and I wanted to show that I could also trace that, even though it's a 3D, uh, you know, sort of solid geometry. I'll use the same tool. This time I could just go grab that edge. I could go to my passes tab, and I could do an axial offset again of negative 0 0.002, and I'll hit okay. And now I have a tool path. So if I were to turn off my models one more time and turn on the simulate, turn my stock on um, and hit play, you'll see that I'm getting sort of a gouge line around there because uh, I'm technically cutting into my part. 
And if I turn the accuracy up, I guess we can see the red line. You can see that I'm getting that outline there, even though it shows that it would be full of stock right now. So I'll close this up. And that is the trace command to start out with. So how does the engrave command differ? From the 2D menu, I'm gonna select engrave and I'm gonna use the same tool. This time for the contour selections, I'm just gonna click on the edges that I'd like to add the engrave to. So I'll just go ahead and click on some edges here. Can be sort of a tedious process to do. If you have uh, letters with islands, make sure you select the islands or this won't work quite right. Uh, so I'll just keep going around and grabbing these edges on the top. I just have a few more to do. I'll grab, I'll grab all those. And I'm also going to grab this uh, little pocket that I made. Now, I made this pocket really deep, and I did that for a reason. I want to show you how this works and another misunderstanding about the engrave command. So those are my selections. Again, I'm not going to do anything with heights. I'm not going to really do anything with passes. I'm just going to go over to the linking tab. I don't even have to do anything with linking. So um, when I'm done with that, I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. And then I will get my tool path. Now, it did give me a warning that maybe it couldn't get in everywhere. Uh, no passes to link somewhere, or maybe there's a tight corner. But what I wanted to show is that even though my pocket is really deep, notice that my tool doesn't go down to that depth. And uh, maybe I can do this to kind of explain what's going on. So I'll switch to the design workspace. Actually, I don't even have to do that. I will just uh, create a section view. So I'm gonna say manage, uh, inspect, sorry, and then I'm gonna say section analysis and we'll just kind of drag a spot into the pocket and I'll hit okay. Now, if I click on that engraved tool path again and I simulate it with all tool paths and the stock off, if I put my mouse right about there and I backspace this off a little bit, what you'll see is with the engraved tool path, the tool goes down as deep as it needs to so that the sides of the tool touch the profile that you're trying to cut. So that's why you don't have to set any tool height on there. You'll also notice that whenever you come up to the corner, it kind of V's out and goes for those uh, diagonal corners. So if I shut this off and I turn off my analysis, I'll shut off my model. <clears throat> I'm just gonna turn on my engraved tool path, simulate this. Let's see. Uh, I'll regenerate that quick. We'll click on this and we'll simulate it. There we go. And then I'm gonna turn on my stock. My model is off. Actually, my model is still on, so let me turn that off. Now when I hit play, what we'll see in the corners is it cuts the, the trace on the bottom, and then it pulls the tools up to the corner to give you more of a decorative look to the text that you're going to get. So you get this kind of sharp V bottom, and then it goes sharp to the corners. So people get weird results with this because they think they want to engrave their text because that's what they're trying to do, but they really want to trace it. You also notice that I didn't have to set the depth on this. Another thing that I common error I see people do is on the heights tab, they try to go to the bottom height and they try to put some negative number here to set the depth that they want to go to. And really all you have to do is just select the geometry and select the tool and it will do the rest. Fusion will do the rest calculated in tool path. So here, again, you can see that I have some regular uh, stick text. I'll probably just skip that now. You guys don't know how that works from this example. But I'm gonna do, the 2D and engrave one more time. And now this time I'm gonna go uh, same tool for the geometry, I'm gonna click on this text. Notice that I haven't even engraved this. I haven't even cut it in the fusion side. It's just a flat 2D sketch and I'll hit okay. And I get my tool path. And if I turn off my models again, you'll see that it does the same thing. It, it's able to find the edges of the sketch and it brings the sides of the tool down, the, the chamfer part of the tool down and touch it, until it touches each side of that profile and sets the depth automatically. So most of the time, people think they want to use engrave and they might think they want to use engrave and they get frustrated because they can't get rid of the result that they want. Usually what they really want is the trace command. If you want to try to do something more decorative or fancy, now some people may refer to this as V carving, then engrave is the tool path that you want to use for that. Hope that helps to explain the differences between trace and engrave. 
Um, again, remember this video was generated by sort of user questions or submissions. And if you have anything that you'd like me to cover on the channel, make sure you send me an email to kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com and I'll see if I can work your idea in. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. And as always, thanks for watching.